All right, I'm back. I just turned the camera off. I just shot a literature for another book and I was going through my iPad to see if there was anything else that I could review. And I remembered one that I read while I was on bed rest. It's a very long book. It's over 700 pages long, but I loved this book. Like this book warrants a literature way more than the last book that I reviewed, which that one, if you watch, I have very mixed feelings on this one. I recommend if it's a subject that you would like to read. So it is Margaret George's Helen of Troy. I'm going to show you the cover art. It doesn't look very exciting. The reason that I got this book is because I am a huge fan of Philippa, Philippa Gregory's books. She does a lot of like British history, a lot of like Henry VIII time period books, and I've done reviews for some of her books on here, some glitterters. And I'm obsessed with her as an author. And when I was on bed rest with my back, I needed some new books to read. And I, for whatever reason, wasn't really in the mood to read like teen fiction, which is what I tend to kind of read a lot. I wanted something more real, like something that felt historically accurate, something that could happen in our world. It wasn't like a fantasy. I just, I think I needed to be a little bit more grounded onto earth because I was going through so many mental things at the time with my injury and everything. So I googled authors like Philippa Gregory, I never know how to say her first name, and a lot of people recommended Margaret George. So I googled her and Helen of Troy pops up. Now I am a huge fan of Greek and Roman mythology. I actually took extra elective courses in college on Greek and Roman mythology because it's just something that interests me so much. It's, it's like that British history thing. I'm like a huge history buff with old British royalty and I am with Greek and Roman mythology also. So the story of Helen of Troy, the actual mythological story, not necessarily the movie, although Troy is like hands down one of my favorite movies. I actually made Alex watch it. He loved it too. It's a really, really great movie, but I'm not talking about the movie. I mean the actual mythological story of, you know, the apple and like uh, Paris having to decide between the three goddesses and all of that. I just really like that story. So I saw this book and I was like, I'm just gonna get it. I got it, it's 700 pages, it is a long book. And I read it, I don't even remember stopping. I'm sh I had to have stopped some to like eat and sleep probably within 700 pages. But that time period is also a little bit of a blur because I was on a lot of medications and so I'm surprised I even remember this book and I think the fact that I remember it means that it was really good because there are some books that I know that I read but this book, I cried my little eyes and heart out over this book. She, this author, is able to write in a way that I felt about Lauren Oliver in the Delirium trilogy, which I also like cried my heart out during that trilogy. I do cry in books, but not like every single sad book. I'm way more prone to cry in a movie because it's all visual and like you get all wrapped up in it. With a book, I'm less likely, but if I cry really hard in a book, it means that I've really connected to the book. And hell, this book, oh my goodness, I, I loved it. I think that the author was able to capture the tragic love story between Helen and Paris and make more sense of it than the movie. I know the movie isn't even historically accurate. I mean, historically accurate. We don't even know if this happened, but according to the mythological story, but this book is much more mythologically sound in its basing. And it also does a lot of, of a better job at making you understand why Helen would leave her own country, which she was queen by birthright, and go with this like much younger guy to a foreign land and cause this huge war. And this book, because it is really mythological based, mythologically based, it's gonna have like the gods and the goddesses as real characters in the book. If that's something that bothers you, you might not wanna, you might not enjoy this book because it is kind of like a fantasy element, but that was really believed in this religion. And um, the characters are written as real in this book. And so it's not like, coincidences happen and they think it's the gods and goddesses like they're actually in the book they're they're real they exist within the story and it just it's such a tragic story like you I feel like in the movie it's like Helen and Paris like kind of fall in lust and then she leaves with him and 
she has this like horrible husband which she doesn't like at all in the movie and also in the movie it's kind of weird because they make it sound like Sparta's not Helen's country they actually make it sound like she was brought there to marry Menelaus and she says something like Sparta's never been my home um, when she's like lying naked on the bed with Paris and it's that's not true. She actually is a Spartan queen by blood. Um, Menelaus is from a different country. So that that's kind of weird and kind of confused me in the movie. But she leaves like everyone she knows, including her daughter. She has a daughter in the book and goes off with Paris. And it's all because of the gods. Like it's Aphrodite forced this to happen. She has no control over it. And it's just, it really, it tugs your heartstrings because I feel like the author writes it in a way where you really feel like you understand the feelings. And I also, I don't know if I was like at a point at the time in my relationship that I'm in, in real life, where I kind of was like relating to these feelings more of I just think like because of the timing and what was going on in my personal life, I felt like I connected more with the story than I would have maybe if I had read it in a different time period. I don't know if that's really making sense. I'm like trying to say what I want to say without actually saying what I want to say, which doesn't really make sense. I loved this book. I loved it. I, I think the world building in it, the element of feeling like you understand what's going on. I feel like sometimes when I read books, I have no idea like what it looks like, where they are, what it what it feels like, what it smells like, what people are wearing. Like I have a really hard time immersing myself into books where I don't feel like the world building element has been good enough for me to really understand. This book I felt like I was in Troy, on the streets of Troy, like they explain, the author just is really descriptive in her world, world building which made me enjoy the book more. Also the book does have a slow part in the middle where they're in this, this siege because the siege lasted for 10 years and which they don't show in the movie at all. In the movie it looks like the war lasts for like three days. Um, but in real life, I mean, according to the story, it was a 10 year war and they, there is like a slower part in the middle of the book. And I think it's because it, the author wants you to feel what it feels like to be in a 10 year siege and have all of these years going by slowly. And there's not anything that's changing. There's nothing exciting. It's like the world has just like stopped because they can't leave the city of Troy. They can't leave the walls they're running out of food, they're running out of water, but it's this really like slow 10 year process. And you really like start to kind of feel that sense of just boredom where it it's like not worth it anymore to have started this war. But then at the same time, you have all of Helen's feelings about how she's like still just madly in love with Paris. And oh my gosh, the ending of this book, I, I something happens in the book where broke my heart and I, I got, I cried and I saw and blah, blah, blah. And she goes back to, um, to Sparta and which does not happen in the movies, but this is all based in the story. Then something happens in the end of the book that just like it, I mean, I cried my little heart out over this book. So hands down recommend it. If you like mythology, if you like historical books, if you like books based on real stories, if you liked the movie, if this just sounds good to you because of this literature and you don't mind a 700 page book, read this book and let me know what you think because I connected to this book, I loved it, and I want you guys to read it. If it sounds like something you'd be interested in, I want to like pass on the knowledge that this is a really good book and I got very connected to it and I kind of want to read it again, but yeah. Leave me a comment below if you've read it or if you're going to read it, what you think about it. And also if you have any books that you want me to read, I need a couple new books to read. Um, so leave me comments below about that and I will see you guys with my next video. Bye.